I'm going to ask all the speakers to come back up, actually, just now, except for Mahendra, who's there, because we'll have a couple of minutes for questions and answers while these guys get various things sorted out. So does anyone have any... Well, actually, does anyone have any burning questions first before I get them all to come up? Or can we just take them in the audience? So any questions about Sarif? Questions about the integration with St. Andrews, OpenBiz, Beacons? Okay. Well, I, I would have to say, um, where's, where's Heather? I think the, um, the, the, the whole Beacons and the, the engagement, I like the whole kind of pathways to, to research. I thought that was all very interesting. So do you think you're going to, are you finding you're going to be more involved in kind of working with impact narratives and various things with the REF 2014 with institutions, you know, looking at, looking at some of that and the, the engagement side of things, or is that? We're working with, um, I mean, we're there, I think, I think we find we're working more with individual researchers to, in the forward planning of getting uh, new grants and, and filling that, um, the aspect of the pathways to impact that they have to fill in. Um, but um, what we've, I think we've, kind of step back from the impact agenda in a sense because we're not, as we say, we're not impact, but we're working with people that they can put public engagement within that only when it has had impact directly. Okay. Ian, are you ready or are you? No, no, I'm just going to keep going. Just You're just going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. i just sort of karaoke or something. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, sin if you want, but no, no, no. Um, well, I think the, the Serify project, I mean, I think that's some really interesting work looking at that. I mean, apart, obviously, I was slightly scarred by the Excel spreadsheet, um, but I think it's good to work a bit of XML and a bit of Serif in, especially of a, you know, a Thursday afternoon. Um, but, you know, in terms of the work that you've been doing with that, you said you're going to be handing it over to, uh, to Queen's, so are they, no, I don't know, are they, are they ready for this yet? <laughs> Um, I think, well, how do, you see, how do you see that work kind of developing and taking it forward? Yeah, I mean, that's just part of what, what we're doing. So we're taking the uh, information from the data on researchers in our four partner institutions, putting it into the TCD quiz as a kind of a, or not the TCD quiz, into the Serif um, uh, Serified quiz, and uh, creating Serif XML in order to exchange it with uh, Thomson Reuters and pulling it back in again. So the Queen's side of it, which, as I say, would be a nice surprise, I hope, for Ricky and his team who are well capable of, uh, of doing this. They've been doing fantastic work in this. So we'll, we'll try and see if this is, we're, we're concerned to make sure that this is a practical um, uh, example of the data exchange. So we want to take a real institution and create the, um, in the exchange within that environment. So are they ready for it? I don't know if any of us are ready for it, but we need to try and do it anyway. Great, thank you very much. How are you guys doing? I can do more. Okay, well, Siobhan, I think the, the, yeah, the, 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 the open biz stuff, I think, is, that, that's been, that's really interesting to see sort of the ongoing engagement that you're doing then, and then sort of, sort of almost kind of brokering between the universities and, and sort of the, the comp and, and businesses. So, I mean, is there anything you want to say about some of the, the, the upcoming webinars that, that you're doing, or? Thank you. Um, yes, I'll unashamedly plug our webinars and you can stay tuned to us on Twitter to be um, able to keep up to all our latest happenings. But we're planning one at the end of October, which will actually be hosted in Inverness. We've recently opened a regional office up in Inverness, so we really are covering all aspects of um, Scotland. And we're, re we're going to work with Glasgow School of Art, Strathclyde, and a couple of other partners there in looking at um, how businesses can innovate through design-led innovation. So that's going to be quite in in, um, interactive. We've got a number of businesses that have tapped into design-led um, expertise. For example, a very small um, company that's developing um, mints, so a very healthy mint, but actually comes with a very affirmative message. And they've developed some unique packaging for that, tapping into expertise in Cal University of Cal um, Glasgow Caledonian. So um, that will be one highlight, but I'm sure we'll have lots of others at that event in Inverness. Mm -hmm.
Downloading the Interface On app. Now, we have a question for you, actually. Ian, uh, yes, I do have you have a question? It's not too cheeky. Sorry. It's a slightly cheeky question. Um, next year, we have a slightly larger conference here, repositories orientated. And one of the things that would be really good is to actually engage with businesses, to get businesses involved in our conferences. Because, you know, we do research and there's a lot there. How easy is it going to be to get businesses down to things like this? To get businesses involved in repositories and research data and sharing and all these things that you've been starting with? It's a really interesting question because one of the whole um, objectives of really starting OpenBiz was to get businesses more thinking about access to resources through publications. And I know JISC themselves have commissioned other work which is looking at um, access and open access and how much businesses actually do tap in. Um, we can try and get businesses. I know that businesses are particularly interested in... Um, finding better ways of kind of searching databases, etc. But equally well, um, you know, we've done some really interesting studies about rate of return from business, uh, for businesses on social media aspects. So I think, again, with a lot of the, the developments in that area, there might be a compelling reason for them to come along. Thank you very much. I'm going to hand you over to Mahendra again. Hello, everyone. Okay. Um, so what we um, promised to do was... Um, we whittled, we had five um, entries for the um, developer challenge and uh, because of time, um, we've picked three out of the five um, to actually present to you. They're going to have four minutes each. Hopefully we're going to be quite strict on that. Um, <laughs> I know, I should have told you that before. Um, and I'd just like to sort of make, just hold on. Um, uh, just, just sort of to name check the people who actually um, uh, who entered the challenge. Um, uh, an honourable mention to Mark McGillivray. Is Mark here? Hi. Um, um, and Joe Walsh. Is Joe Walsh here? No. Nope. Okay. Um, and all the, um, all the entries will be sort of available on the DevCSI blog so you can actually see what was actually produced. But because of time, I'm going to jump straight in. And first of all, um, Jim Clo is going to present his entry for the challenge. And over to you. Okay. Which one? This Wait, one? Both of them. Both of them. Don't, okay. Don't you. All right. So my, uh, my, ch uh, my answer to the challenge was a visual filter for the learning registry. It, learning registry is fairly new and there, there was no, there is nothing yet like this um, for the, uh, the registry itself. But let me tell you a little bit w to give you some context of what the registry is. Um, registry is a data network for advertising metadata and activity data which we, we call at the learning registry paradata. Uh, on a data network that connects disparate repositories together. Um, any format, any schema, linked, inline, it's all welcome. <clears throat> and we do mean it, uh, anything by anyone. Uh, it could be service data, it could be anything. You can be, it can be submitted by a, a very large organization. It could be information submitted by an individual educator. But what does this all mean? It means we have a lot of data. Um, we don't, <clears throat> the early adopters have kind of had a hard time understanding how to um, use this and access it because the learning registry, registry is an infrastructure. It is not, uh, it is just a set of services. There is no interface. Uh, so, trying to uh, trying to help c communicate this better to uh, people trying to uh, understand what it is and how they could be inspired to build on top of this, uh, I wanted to build a very simple uh, interface, browser interface for it. Uh, so. 
Since, the, uh, since we do accept anything and everything, we're devoid of standards. Uh, or devoid of schema standards. We don't care. We do really want to use anybody's. Uh, Dublin Core, NSDL Dublin Core, LOM, others, it's all welcome. Uh, so I used a, uh, I use an HTML, pure HTML5 approach to this. Um, so this makes the solution very uh, device agnostic. So I'll jump to a demo real quick of this. See how this works. Okay, for you the resolution on this is oh, it's, that's very. Uh, Projectors aren't hugely wonderful, I'm afraid. Yeah. So uh, we start off by. Let me reload this. So we start off with a blank, kind of a blank slate. Uh, we could search for, you know, I'm going to search for equations because I know we in my sample data set I've got data representing that. And we load, uh, I'm loading that into a visual tree here. Um, it's basically a touch, a touch graph, uh, which allows you, as you, we can see that there's 21 documents that were found uh, are about equations. We can then dive in a little bit deeper and get some, you know, find other documents that are equations and Gra like graphing techniques and the thumbnails on the side update. Uh, there's also some information here regarding. Thank you very much. Four minutes. Other stuff. Really tight. Yep. <laughs> Michael, one of you. You don't have to use the whole four minutes. No. Nope. Okay. I'll keep a tra track on it. Um, okay, so th these are topics again. So that's why I was so grateful to Javon for giving me a moment to tell you what the topics are. And because I know about how bad the projectors are, uh, we haven't put all the topics up here. We just put a few. And so we took, uh, and this was 24 hours. Uh, I sort of suddenly thought when this was happening yesterday morning, we could do this tonight said to Chen, can you come early for a meeting that was meant to be at 4.30? So we got together at 3.30 and decided what we'd do. Uh, means we got about 16 hours working, roughly, um, including going home time. or not including the going home time, so sleep was limited. Anyway, these are some of the topics that we got just by analysing 3,000 documents that happen to be in the research archive now into 16 topics. We've also got analysis into 64, but until we clean up the interface a bit, it's too much information to deal with. But what we wanted to do was to see how could we address the issue of bridging, uh, creating bridges between people using this. So if you know that somebody writes a lot of papers on chemistry, then you can say, hmm, their papers relate to somebody else's papers who writes on chemistry. So what we've done here is just to give you really a first, sorry, to give you a first view of the kind of information you can get if you, if you have these topics. So what we've done is, again, because we haven't had time to get an interface that'll let us be selective, we've just said that we'll take all the people and then find out the people who are closest. So for each topic, we'd find a person, the seven people who are closest to that topic and we label them. So this is the topic. These are the people that are closest to that topic. And what we will do... What on earth is that? Um, what we will do eventually is make it so that... There. At the moment, you can sort of drag things around a little bit, and you can see some of the structure. But you can't see very much if you know... Edinburgh, you'll know that this, for instance, is a lawyer. Even if you don't know Edinburgh, you might know he's a lawyer. Uh, some of the others, there are lawyers. There are floating people who aren't on the topics we've selected, but maybe I can find some more 
It's even less room here than on my, well, I have a very big screen, uh, than on my screen in my office. So we can't see very much, but if you try it online, uh, homepages.inf.ed.ac, mforman, era, era.html. I'll find a better URL sometime and presumably tell you guys about it, uh, and we'll have that. But the idea is that we should be able to choose topics, see the people connected to them, see who they connect to through to other topics, and, and then go through to the documents that are the basis for that information. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, well, we're about to find out about the dangers of giving a presentation on an open source operating system. Yeah. I did get um, slightly worried because we had to look at this and then they decided to go and do some more coding and I thought, they're going to break it. Yeah. We fixed it now, so they can... Is there a URL? Am I? Yeah, okay. Oh. Yeah, okay. Hmm, okay, that's not quite what I've got on my screen. Should we try again? I think I'm going to stick with that for safety reasons. <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay, so ideally this would be a bit more central. I'm not really sure what's going on there. Oh, is it okay to use this? Is this? This is on. Oh, yep, there you are. Right. Okay. So here we are. This is a co-authorship graph. Some of you've probably heard about these or seen them before. Um, each blob represents an author. And what we're really interested in was, on the theme of bridges, is the bridges between authors and how closely they work together. So this is Dave Millard's career going past us temporal, uh, temporally. Uh, this is 2003. These are all the people Dave co-authored with, with people who he co-authored co with most commonly on the inside, and people he only co-authored with once around the outside. Um, what you're basically seeing here is the more people Dave works with, the wider the circle is. That kind of our interpretation was if he's working with more people, he's working with each individual person less like, closely than he would be if he was just working with three or four people. And as Dave's career goes on over time, you can kind of see they're getting more and more spread out. Um, so that's quite interesting, but oh, have I got a mouse somewhere? Can anyone see? Oh, God. Sorry. Uh, once again. Oh, hello. Now it looks a bit... Yeah, look at that. Um, okay, so there's Dave in the middle here. And we can look at people like, for example, Gary Wills. And we can see, God willing, um, the papers that he's authored with Gary Wills here in 2009. And we could also change Gary Wills to be the focus of this graph. So, just down here. Hopefully... Right, now this is Gary's graph, but in 2011. If we go back to 2001, we could hopefully, I think, see Gary from the beginning of time. Fingers crossed. The moment of truth. Thank you, Gary. No, no, we're okay. There we go. 2001, Gary Wills, good, everything's cool. Um, and let's see who it is Gary authors closely with. Uh, Dave DeRaw, uh, well, we don't know who that is. We'll find out. Anyway, so what we were trying to get at is that this is not just a uh, co-authorship graph. This is an interface to browse spatially and temporally the, um, the space which is your authorship. And it's not just repository specific. You know, this isn't running off an ePrints repository. This is running off RDF. So you could connect this to any old triple store, basically, and generate uh, these kind of visualizations really straightforwardly. Um, is there anything else I need to say? Oh, yeah. Um, so I should probably talk about my team. Matt, who I work with a lot in the office, is great. He wrote all the back-end stuff. I wrote a lot of the front-end stuff. And he helped me immensely with the front-end stuff and also wrote a Petra Kutcher for me this morning with almost no information so that I could get on with the programming. So they've been an excellent team. Um, <laughs> that's about all I think I want to say. Okay, um, so they don't actually know, um, nobody knows yet, only we know, <laughs> um, who the first, second, and third prizes are. Um, so, in the silver envelope we have, 
because of time, um, I'm going to keep sort of. We've got um, we've got to announce the prizes here, and then we're also going to do award, award a special prize for the best idea. Um, and we had, I think, six, six. No, we had about ten ideas. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, um, just just I want to just check something. We have actually just made the decision now, actually. Okay, um, so um, in third place is... Let me just get the details. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, um, is um, Jim Clo for the Learning Registry. Um, okay. Um, Jim doesn't... Um, actually get a physical um, t uh, voucher. He, he, he wins a um, £50 Amazon voucher. Okay? Which will be... Yeah. Which will be emailed to him. We'll, we'll do the photographs later. We'll do the photographs after. Okay? Um, uh, Runner-up is... Let me just get the names. Is uh, Michael Foreman, Sen Zhang, and Theodosa Ta Tagia. And um, they, they share um, an Amazon voucher worth £150. Okay. <laughs> okay. And obviously, um, the winners are for People Pivot, um, and that's Patrick Nasrini, Matt R. Taylor, and Andrew Day, University of Southampton. And they share a prize of £300 um, Amazon vouchers. Okay. Uh, has anybody got? Has anybody got a camera? Okay, <laughs> we just want to take some pictures. Okay, so actually, okay, before we do that, we need to just announce the um, the best idea um, prize, which is a fifty-pound Amazon voucher. And let me just remind myself. Okay, um, so um, we had several entries. I'd just like to name check um, them all. Robin Rice. Nicola Osborne, Peter Murray Rust, Jody Double, um, Yvonne Howard. Um, special mentions to Yvonne Howard and Jody Double, especially Jody Double, who, who actually submitted five ideas. <laughs> she must really want something from Amazon. And actually, the, the winner goes to Jody Double. Uh, and the. Uh, the um, the idea we liked, um, we, we liked this, it was really simple, okay, um, and it was about how um, collections, it was the, 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 the community collections, um, it was um, how um, community collections which exist in repositories could be enhanced with um, uh, content from the community, and we really liked that idea. We'll, we'll blog about this so that all the ideas will be posted up on uh, the DevCSI blog, but... Um, Jody, if you'd like to come up, we're just going to take some pictures with everybody. Um, if we could just take a quick picture next to that. <laughs> and I'd just like to just thank everybody for all their hard work. And um, I'm really glad we had some entries. <laughs> yep. He's uh, over there. Uh, I'm about to introduce our last speaker of the session. But before I do, I've got prizes to give out. Prizes for the Pecha Kuchas. Uh, we have one prize for yesterday's Pecha Kucha, one for today's. So uh, both Pecha Kuchas were very close. Uh, and I'm pleased to see, say, or sorry, say that the winner for yesterday's Pecha Kucha is Sheila Fraser. If you'd like to come up. And the winner of today's Petra Kutcher is Mark McGilvery. It's <laughs> so, um, the, the pleasantries uh, are, are done with. We're almost in, in the home straight, and uh, 